and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's video we are continuing with S3 and we are going to perform some basic operations on a file like getting the file from the S3 bucket and saving the file back to the S3 bucket. This is something you have been requested, so I'm making through your wishes. If you're interested in watching more content like this, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> this is going to be a very practical video like the last video where I show you how to trigger a lambda when there are changes happening in the S3 bucket for example when you create an object modify an object or delete an object in this video we are continuing with S3 but this time we are going to perform basic operations on the S3 bucket from the lambda so we are going to create a bucket from the serverless YAML then we are going to give permissions to our Lambda to perform operations in that bucket. Then we are going to create a new file if there is no or and get it. We are going to perform some operations on the file and then we are going to save it back. And by the end you will get back a sign URL and this is the public URL signed with uh, IAM permissions. So you can share private files in the open internet securely. So I will show you how to do everything step by step and we will be using the AWS SDK for Node as we are we're using for Dynamo or for other things as well. So let's go to the code. So let's get start as always by creating a new directory where we are going to put our project. I will call it serverless S3 operations. You can put any name you want. And I will get into that directory and will create a node project npm init dash yes and we then will create a serverless project using the template from AWS and node. After everything is done when we get into our project that we just created with the free files with packet chase on the handler JS and the serverless YAML. As always the first thing we need to do is to go to the serverless YAML and change the name of the serverless project. Now I will set the region to Ireland. You can put any region you like, but I like Ireland, it's close. And then I will pick my profile because I have many and I will just put default, remove some of the comments. The next thing I want to do is I want to modify the default Lambda and change the name to append text and then add an HTTP event that will be a put to a path called append, append text. So whenever we call this endpoint and we passed some text, then this text will get appended to file and we can get the file URL, public URL back. Mm -hmm. So now I will create a bucket and to create a bucket, you just need to use the cloud formation template to put something like this in the serverless YAML. In the resources property, you just put uh, S3 operations bucket, that's the name of the resource in the, in the YAML. And then you put the bucket name and I will put serverless S3 operations bucket. You can put any name you want. If you pick this name, this will be taken by me because name of the buckets are global in all AWS. This will create a private bucket for your account with all the default properties. If, if you want to have more detail in your properties, you can add whatever you want in this template and it will create the bucket for you. The next thing we want to do is we want to give permissions to our Lambda to write in this bucket and to get the items in this bucket. And for do that, I will just add um, permissions in the IAM role of the serverless YAML, I will add these three actions that this Lambda can perform to list the bucket, to get the object, to put the object and into the resource bucket that we just created. If I was doing this in production, I will have this name as an environmental variable, but I think for now I don't want to add that complexity to this code. But if you're interested on learning a little bit more about environmental variables, just let me know in the comments and I can make a whole video out of them. Now we are going to our handler.js, our serverless YAML is ready. 
and I'm going to change the name of the lambda to from hello to append text and there we are going to create a new file that is the one that will be performing all the operations in the in the S3. I just put manage file, you can put any name, something better, I sure there are better words for this. It's just very bad at naming stuff. It takes me hours, so I just pick any name. And I will put this manage file and I will create it. And in there we will put all the operations that we want to do into our S3. To get started, uh, we need to require in our file AWS and the S3 module. And then I will create two, two constants that will be the bucket name and the object, uh, the file name. This, as I said, I will be using, if I will be doing it in production, I will be using environmental variables. For now, I just have it here. And then we will have one main method that it will be called append text. And in that method, we, can, we want to do these things. First, we want to get the file. And then we want to append some text to the file. So it will be a, a basic TXT file, plain text. We want to append some text to the file in a new line, for example. And then we want to save the file again into the, the bucket. And then we want to get the URL, the public URL for this, this file. So we will do this uh, chain of promises. So we will have four promises chained together that will be performing different things. The first thing we want to do is to get an object. To do that, we will be using this function called get s3 object. And the only thing that this is doing is calling the AWS SDK get object with the bucket that is a constant and the key. And I just put the response content type is a plain text, but that's not really needed. And I'm making a promise of this, so this is returning a promise. The next thing we want to do is we want to is we want to, um, to append some text to that to that file. So this get s3 object will be returning a buffer. And this buffer we can then pass to this uh, function append text. And we will first have no no information in there so that this buffer will be undefined it will be not found and then we just return the text that we want to append and then if there is something in the buffer we just convert it to string and if it's encoded with ascii as this will be we just append in a new line the text so this is the way to uh, to transform a buffer to a string this will just do what we need to do. If you want to do more complex operations, for example, if you are working with images, you can do exactly the same get object, but maybe with a different content type. And then here you can do it like resizing an image or whatever. Or if you are doing something more complex with text or it will be a JSON, this is the function that you can be creative. As this is a demo, I'm just doing something super simple. The next thing we want to do is we want to save that file into the bucket again. So that will uh, save using the s3 put object function. We'll save the body into the bucket with the content type plain text. And the key will be exactly the same. And the body is the one that we got from the append text. And the last thing we want to do is to get the sign URL. This is the public URL for that file signed with, your, uh, with proper keys. So this will expire in time. So you get an URL that you can share with other people. Now we go back to our S3 object. So, so in the beginning, we'll have an empty fold, an empty bucket, and there will be no file. So basically, if we try to get this, this file, we'll see that there will be an error. So what if there is, the file is not there? So then we need to handle this error. It will be only happening once. But as we are creating everything from, from the code, we need to handle that case. So here, uh, if there is an error, like the file not found, for example, we just can create the file there with nothing on it. So then when the next step comes, we can append text to it and everything is nice. So now we construct the chain of promises that we need. This is exactly the same what was in the comment. First, we get the object then we append the text, then we save the object back, and then we get the sign order. 
and that's what we will be returning to the handler.js. One thing you might be interested in is knowing what is inside the AWS SDK in the S3. So just go to the documentation and take a look at it. It's very complete. You can find everything on it. I'll just show you a bit here, but you can find all these operations and there's a lot of different things you can do. So I encourage you to take a look at it and learn how it works because it's very, very convenient. I'll leave you the link in the description box so you can find it. Also, the code will be in the description box as always, so you can go and check it from GitHub. So now we have our managed file done. If I save and we go back to our handler DS, then I, I can call that before returning the response. So we only send the response when the append text is completed and we can remove a little bit what is in the body to just return the result. That is the sign URL. And now we format it a bit. We add the missing brackets. The last thing is to grab the text that we want to append that I will put it in the query parameters. You can put it anywhere, else, but I like it from there. So I will just deploy and we can try it on the Postman and see how it works. I will speed this up for you because the deployment takes a little while and I don't want you to wait. So now this is deployed. We just grab the URL that we get from the endpoint and we put copy paste it in Postman and we can add the text at the end as a query string parameter. So I will put hola and then I get a URL back. I just click there and I can request that file and we can say hola. And then if I go and put, I don't know, Marcia, get the same URL back and then I can see what is inside. Hola, Marcia. And I can put full bar. And then you can put as many things as you want. It will just return always the, the URL. So that's very simple. If you go to your AWS account, you will see also the bucket is created, the file is created. You can check it out from there as well. This was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a big thumbs up and put me in the comments below what you would like to hear about. I have some list of topics that you already suggest me and I will be making those for you. But if there's something else you're interested, I would love to hear and get videos that are interesting for you. And around here, as always, you can find more videos from my channel for you to watch if you want to. And I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!